So as you may already know, Bun 1.0 was recently released. They have a nice video that kind of walks you through most of the cool features of that 1.0 version. And I want to kind of give you my thoughts on Bun and maybe even try to install it and build a really basic project just to see how much faster does it feel when I'm using it on my computer. Um, let's take a step back. You know what Node is, right? Node is a JavaScript runtime. And if you use Chrome, which I'm using right here, my Chrome browser, behind the scenes, Chrome is using something called a V8 engine to basically interpret the JavaScript and run it. Now there's another browser called Safari and that Safari uses a engine behind the scenes called JavaScript Core. And Bun utilizes JavaScript Core to interpret the JavaScript and compile it down the machine code or whatever and run your code, right? And it turns out using JavaScript Core over V8 is actually quite faster in terms of like boot up times and run times. And you can kind of see in a lot of these benchmarks over here that Bun can just handle more requests per second. That's one of the main things about Bun, it's just faster. And if you've worked in this ecosystem for long enough, you know that the JavaScript ecosystem, NPM, it's just slow. Like stuff just takes a little bit of time to like install. You end up having tons of node modules that take up the minute or two to install. But not only that, when you start using like TypeScript, you end up having like have all these different configuration files just to get your application working. That's another thing that I think is pretty cool that Bun is trying to tackle, um, basically, ES6 imports and common JS imports, it's abstracted away. You don't need to know about them. You just import your file and it'll work, right? What are some of the cool things that I've seen about Bun? Um, one of them is a watch mode, which basically is like Nodemon built into the actual runtime itself. Now, second thing is testing. Um, on my project at work, to run a single Jest unit test, it takes like eight seconds. I don't know why it's so slow to like basically, yeah, this is exactly what's going on on my project at work. We have Jest and Babel. To run one unit test file, it takes like seven to eight seconds just to get it set up to run like two assert statements. So it's absolutely slow. Now, Bun over here is saying you can do it in less than a second, right? 0.23 seconds. So if that's actually true, I think utilizing this in my project at work will actually speed up everything. It'll speed up the, the CI CD pipeline. Remember, you have all these tests, you have to run them somewhere. And when you commit code, you push them to GitHub Actions. Those have to run in GitHub Actions, they take a long time, right? So any type of speed up that you can get using Bun is going to translate to tons of cost savings for your project because every time you run code in GitHub Actions or Circle CI, which we use as well in a project, it just uses up your worker time, which ends up costing money, right? You have to pay for these servers. Now, although they say that Bun is quote unquote production ready, I think you have to kind of scope back what you mean by production. If you want to build like a, a server side application, like a REST API, it might be um, ready for production. But if you look over here, if you try to run Bun with Next.js, it kind of just uses Node under the hood. It says Next.js currently relies on Node APIs that Bun does not yet implement. Okay, so you can't really use Bun to run Next.js code or they, ha they have other projects as well. I think like Remix, if you search for that, same thing. It's saying Remix relies on Node APIs that Bun does not implement. And I figured this would be the case. Anytime something is, you know, new, like it doesn't have support for everything. And it would be really nice if you can come in here and just like use Bun for running Remix or Next.js. Another thing I'm going to do in the future, not in this video, is I want to actually get a Bun server set up and I want to run it on AWS Lambda. I think Lambda supports running Docker containers. So if I can kind of wrap all of my server that's using Bun as a runtime in a Docker container, I can get that deployed to AWS Lambda and that would be pretty cool too because then I'm basically using it on a really familiar cloud provider which doesn't have Bun support. Right? AWS Lambda only supports I think Node 18 as a runtime so it might be a year or more or maybe they'll never support Bun as their runtime option but again I think you can run Docker containers so that's a kind of a workaround. Now I think Bun also has a bunch of like built-in modules for example like hashing a password i think it's just built into bun directly i think one thing i don't like about node is like to get anything done you end up having to install like tons and tons of different packages i kind of would like it if the the runtime provided more standard utilities out of the box and not rely on like having to install a bunch of deprecated libraries and then like updating them every six months to find something new Anyway, uh, those are just like some of the highlights. My overall thoughts are I am happy about this. I do think that having a different approach to running our node applications, more specifically when we're developing locally, if we can just speed up that process, like I'm all game for it, right? If this speeds it up by even two times, that's awesome. But I think most of the benchmarks say it speeds it up by like sometimes four times, sometimes 10 times. 
Let's just try to build a really basic application. There's a framework called Elysia JS, which is kind of built specifically for Bun here. So I was going to try that out and just uh, go ahead and run this command, see what happens. So it has some benchmarks down here. It says it's 18 times faster than Express. So if you use Express or Next, it says that it can handle a lot more requests per second. But read the fine print. These benchmarks are always very like obscure. Let's just go ahead and run this bun create Elysia app. Let's see what this does. All right, so I created the Elysia project. Let's just go ahead and CD into app. Actually, I'm just going to reopen this. I'm going to go ahead and open app. And now if I zoom in a little bit, we got a project. Okay, so some of the main differences with bun is instead of a package lock, you get a bun lock. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's in here. Let's just open it and see what happens. It's just a binary file, so uh, maybe it's not important to know about. So instead of doing npm run dev, what you can actually do now is just bun dev, and that will run the same node alias under the hood. And now we have a, an Elysia app running at port 3000. So let's just go ahead and I wish I could command click that. I can't. Let's just go to this port. Here we have it. We have an application that is running. So it's kind of like Express, but it's better, so they say. It's more performant, so they say. Um, I haven't used this before. This is the first time I'm using this. So let's just try to add some exclamation marks, save this. And um, we have to go back and manually refresh this page. Just make a new route. I'll just make a, a route called hello. We'll do the same thing. Um, although we don't need to do a listen again. I think listen is just something you tack on to the very end. We'll do that. Okay. Go to here. We'll say slash hello. There we go. And you might have noticed that when I change files, like this thing flickers real quick. That's how fast it's like reloading. Um, if you use this with NodeMon, it's actually pretty slow. Okay, so I'm not gonna dive too much further into detail of this Alicia library, but feel free to do that if you want to. Another thing I wanted to try doing with Bun is it says it's a drop-in replacement for Node. So I should be able to open up any of my existing projects and delete the Node modules and see how fast it installs. So we have a Code Racer project, which I've kind of talked about on this channel, which the community has worked on together. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of the node modules and let's see what happens. Um, we're going to compare the installation times between using NPM and using bun. So I did want to just benchmark how much faster is a bun install over like a NPM install. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out my NPM cache and then I'm going to run NPM install and just see how long it takes. I also deleted my package lock file because I want to see like a fresh installation. Um, how long it would take. All right, so it took quite a while. Um, I believe the total time was about 55 seconds. I think this is how you read the wall time of that time command. Um, but let's try it again with bun. So again, let's just make sure we remove all of the package locks, all the, if there's any nested NPM modules, let's just delete those. And then also over here. All right, so now for bun, let's do a bun install, but I do want to make sure I clear out the bun cache as well. So I think that will tell us a directory of the bun cache, and I think I can just remove that directory completely. Okay, it's gone. So hopefully the cache is clear. Let's just go ahead and do a bun install, and I'll put a time here. To, and this took about 10 seconds. So yeah, this is definitely installing a lot faster than NPM. I'm not shaded off the whole 40 seconds, right? So that's like a, a huge increase in installation time, which is pretty nice. Now, the reason this is good, again, like I mentioned before, inside of a CI CD pipeline, especially GitHub Actions, when your project is larger, you end up like splitting out your entire build pipeline into various different steps that run in parallel or concurrently, I guess you could say. All of these steps run on different containers, right? They run on different runners which means that they all have to do an NPM install every time they run, okay? So if every single run you can shave off 50 or 40 seconds because of the NPM install steps, that saves a ton of time. And time equals money because running your stuff and testing your stuff in these CI CD pipelines, usually there's a cost associated with it, right? You can't just do this stuff for free. You have to pay money to run these, these jobs and these tasks and these tests inside your pipeline. So something like this is actually really awesome and a huge speed increase is actually something that I'm excited about. All right, uh, that is my overview of Bun. I mean, they have a lot of other things that are like built in out of the box. Like they have our automatic support for JSX and TSX. You don't have to go and mess around with the TS config file, although I think you can. Overall, I'm kind of excited about this. I'm kind of hoping that as a community, maybe we can switch over to something that's more performant. I think 
Node is still great. Node still runs a bunch of stuff, but um, anywhere that we can squeeze out more performance is a huge win in my opinion. So anyway, that's about it. Um, if you guys have more comments about what you like about Bun and things that you think are really going to be game changing about using this over Node or Dino, it's funny because I, I don't think anyone uses Dino. Dino was another attempt to kind of like replace Node. So we'll see how this works. We'll see if Bun actually makes progress in that whole endeavor of making Node and the ecosystem better. That's about it. So other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.